Well, hey guys, what's going on? It's Steph here. I hope you've been well. I know I have, and it's time for another metal detecting relic hunting adventure. This hunt was one that I needed in the worst possible way. Colonial and early Victorian relics, a few old coins came to the party, and a lot more. So I'm not gonna spoil too much of this for you. Let's just hop right in. Okay, I'm back at it today. This part of the field here, at my permission, has never ever been cut, so I am kind of hightailing it over there, but trying to trip across signals along the way. And I got this one. We'll take a look. Huh. Well, this just flew out. This is just the dirt it was stuck to. I'm assuming it's some kind of button, I imagine. Uh, nope, that actually looks like a drawer pull escutcheon. It's gonna be nice and old. That's probably colonial. Pretty one. I'll brush it off and come back. Okay, well, there you have it. That's a colonial drawer pull escutcheon. Handle would have gone through there. There would have been one on the opposite side as well. And yeah, cool little decorative piece. That's a great first target, so we will keep going. Okay, it's probably been literally one minute. I have another target here. Let's dig it up. Okay, it's out. I'm not sure exactly what it is yet. I kind of hope it's a watch winding key. That would be very awesome. Yeah, get away from me, yeah. That probably is what that is. It's got a hole on the end. Oh yeah, that's gotta be what it is. That's awesome. Second target, I haven't dug any trash yet. <laughs> that is so great, oh my goodness. These are such personal, amazing little relics. Somebody used this every 24 hours at least, usually in the Georgian era, um, because we didn't have batteries back then. We had to wind up the watches. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it's so cool. Well, it's my second pretty one from this site. Let me, uh, I'm gonna spray that off and I'll come back. It's beautiful. All right, I sprayed it off. That is just beautiful. Look at that. That is awesome. Although what I did notice when I sprayed it off is that it looks like these little tongs in here may have held a stone or something. So I'm going to recheck the hole, get back to you. If uh, there is something else in the hole, you'll see it. I'll cut back in. If not, then this is as good as it gets, and I am more than happy with that. Great little personal item. Okay, I have a nice repeatable 34 signal right here. It's kind of resting right on top of the lower Ferris region limits there. Let's take a look. Okay, I got it out. Looks like we have a little pistol or musket ball. One of the two, lead round shot. Nice and old. Another desirable in the pocket. That makes me happy. Well, I'm standing on top of the plug where the uh, little round ball came out of, and I have another nice low conductor here. It's kind of mixed, but out here, I dig absolutely everything. Okay, it's not a good find, but it does line up with why I found that little pistol ball right next to it. It's just a plop of lead, but what came out of the hole first was this, and then I rechecked it and found that. So that's why we were getting that weird trace right above that lower ferrous region. That's why. Dig it all. Well, this is probably another big piece of melted lead. I've actually been digging a lot of that today. I just haven't filmed it all for you. But uh, we'll take a look at this one. Nice, loud and proud signal. That should be something decent, but we'll see. Well, I called it. Big piece of melted lead. Not exciting. Is at the very bottom of that hole. It's probably at least 10 inches down, so. Nice depth, nice target. Not really a nice find, though. Okay, this one looks like it must be a pretty good alloy because it's coming up right on the center line, dragging down a little bit. I 
very consistent 29.30. I'm going in. Well, nothing to write home about. A little piece of a harmonica reed. Not exciting. <laughs> so, all right, the next thing I show you, I will try to make it exciting, you know, in terms of uh, what footage I put in the video, I guess. I feel like this is getting a little boring. So uh, anyway, hopefully the next target is a really good one. Okay, next target. Doesn't look great to me, but we'll see. Okay, I just flipped that out. Uh, you know, well, let's just see what it is, I guess. Probably a button. Probably. Uh, huh. Actually, uh, I'm not so sure. Nope, that's a copper. That is a copper. I'm like 98% sure. Can't quite. Yeah, that's a copper. Nice. Oh, I'm glad I dug that. It's a really weird shape, though. Mm, it'd be great if it were hammered. <laughs> this site has the age for it. All right, I'm going to let this dry out, and I will come back. That was such a funky signal. It was way down there, and you saw it was stuck to some orange clay or, uh, you know, iron. I'm not really sure which, but hopefully I can get an ID on this. I'll let it dry out a bit. And I'll come back. <laughs> it's awesome. Oh, well, the coins do not come up pretty here, but they do come up. That is a King George II half penny. It looks like the later head variety, so that's going to be 1740 to 1754, if I'm not mistaken. And pretty much nothing on the reverse. I've always thought the coins out. Whoa, 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 not so fast, not so fast. Why don't we rewind that for a second and flip it back over? You see it now? Okay, let me give you a little bit of help. There we go, that's better. Now we can fully see, well, sort of, that there's a harp on the reverse, meaning this is a King George II Hibernia, my very first, and once I got it home, no matter what I did, I could not see this harp. The only way that I identified it was by replaying the footage. Sometimes it really pays to have a YouTube channel. On with the show and back to me, not really knowing what this actually is. I've always thought the coins out here were actually fire damaged. Yeah, I mean, it's like this yellowy color. It's weird. And it certainly could be a counterfeit or it rang up really low because of the fire damage. Suspected fire damage anyway, but very happy with that despite the condition and uh, hopefully we'll find some of his buddies today we'll see nice little low conductor right here let's dig it up okay we have something good just flipped it out right here i think we have a tom back button oh yeah look at how that shines I say it every time, but that always amazes me. And we actually have the shank. Wow. It doesn't happen often. You know what? I'm going to clean it up and come back. I know you guys have seen like a million of these, but that's a really nice one. Okay, there it is. At least it did have a full shank until my stupid self brushed it off. At least I think that's what happened. I don't know. It's kind of worn right there, but nice 18th century button. That'll be late 1700s, probably just based on that post, the little blob in the middle versus that lathe uh, design that sometimes you see on the back. So, cool. Very good. We'll keep moving. Okay, this is coming up uh, 1415. Hopefully something decent. Well, surprisingly... We have a little buckle down here. It's broken, unfortunately, but thankfully at least it's an old break, so I didn't do that. Uh, I don't think it's going to be too terribly old. Probably Victorian, maybe. I don't know. But uh, I will safely try to unbend that at home. Looks like it has some gilding on there, so nice piece. Okay. Just got this signal.
looks pretty solid to me. Well, it looks like we're going to have a button or a small scent right there. Right there. It's very light, very thin. Uh, it's an Indian. Cool. You can see scent right there. I don't think I've ever found an Indian out here. You know what? Actually, that's a lie I have. I found one fatty Indian, I think. I wonder if that's what that... No, this is just a regular thickness. All right. Nice. Another coin on the day. I'll be back when it's cleaned up. Not the prettiest one I've ever dug, but hey, I'll take an Indian any day of the week. There's one cent on the back. And the date is 1890. I did get it wet because it had just like concrete on it. So I don't want to hear, don't get your copper coins wet. Doesn't matter to me, guys. <laughs> this works. So, you know, and it's not really uh, hurting anything. This stuff is not going to come off. It's like copper cancer here. But uh, yeah, 1890. I will gladly take it. You know, it figures. I'm on my way back to the Jeep right now. I'm calling it a day. And I just tripped over this signal pretty much where I started today. Basically good all the way around. Hmm. Yep. Doesn't lie. There we go, it was every bit of eight or nine inches down. Looks like a nice fat one, so maybe we'll have details. That would be really nice. Oh, I love the suspense. I love it. It's my favorite ad, ah, it's really kicked on there. Uh, what do we have, what do we have? I really wanna know. Everybody really wants to know, right? Or you wouldn't be watching me. Uh, well, that might take me a few minutes. <laughs> So uh, I'll get back to you, but yep, two coppers on the day. It's a fantastic day to me. All right, here she is. Beautiful matron. I know that might not be beautiful to some of you guys, but uh, to me, that's gorgeous. Looks like 1818. And the reverse. I, yes, I did get this one wet too. There was nothing to be saved in terms of patina. That's why I did that. And then this is just a trick for you guys. If you spray it and then you kind of wipe in the dirt, once this dries off, you'll have some dirt in the recessed areas and a more even look to it, which is kind of nice. So that used to say one cent. <laughs> oh, I'm just so happy. What a way to end the day. I'm gonna get out of here and I will most certainly be back. That's an awesome coin. I love her. Just wanna prove my point really quick. See, that looks pretty nice considering I sprayed it. So just wanted to show you that. It's not really translating to film very well. Oh, the sun's helping. Thank you, sun. Thank you very much. But like I'm saying, it's not a terrible idea to spray coppers sometimes. Just saying, let's get rid of that myth. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, well, I thought I was done <laughs> because uh, yeah, ending the day on a copper is a really good way to end. So I didn't film this. It's like a 39 to 40. It just flipped this out. It seems to be some kind of fancy piece of brass. Some kind of, do we have another watch winder? Is that what this is? I don't know. Huh. Maybe some part of a hinge or something. I don't know. I'll brush that one off and come back. Well, it's old and pretty. That's about all I've got for you. There's another hole here and here. I can't quite blast the dirt through yet. I would have to imagine this was meant to affix to leather or wood. I don't know. But if you guys have any ideas, let me know if I don't have something up on the screen already. So I'll actually try to get out of here now. <laughs> Okay, guys, well, I really hope you enjoyed this week's episode. I know I did, or I at least enjoyed hunting that. But what a day. I've been over that site multiple times, and uh, it just, it keeps on giving. What can I say? And a two copper day is always a good day in my book. So take care, everybody. I hope you're getting out there now that the weather is starting to cool off, kind of, sort of, and we will see you next time.